Love your neighbor of yourself. Tell me, how many times have you heard this? But it's not a matter of how many times we heard this, but rather it's a matter of how many times we have put this into practice. Hi, in case you have a man, my name is Aviel. I'm Israel super guy from here, from the land of the Messiah. Well, we continue our study in the book of Leviticus, and we also hope that you had a very meaningful Holy Week especially on Resurrection Sunday, which we celebrated the resurrection of our master and king, Yeshua of Nazareth. In any case, I prepare a lesson on that matter. You can visit our playlist. Well, at the beginning, I say, love your neighbor as yourself. But again, is it a matter of how many times you heard this? Or, but rather, how many times we actually put this into practice? And the question is, are we to choose who actually is our neighbor? Well, let us read exactly the passage that is regarding today's parasha, shall we? And this question was already asked a long time ago to Yeshua of Nazareth. But before we get into that story, let us read what Leviticus have to tell us. So I'm reading chapter 19, verses 18. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people. But love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So this is no Moses, you know, giving, you know, a random <laughs> commandment, but God himself. We are not only to love our neighbors, but as well not to hold a grudge. And let us be honest. If we are honest, how many times we, including myself, because we are not exempt from this, we hold a grudge against our neighbor, against our wife, husband, children, friends. It's something we should you know, consider, but more than consider, repent and stop holding a grudge against our neighbor. If we actually put this into practice, I can almost guarantee that at least half of the prisons in the world will be end as well. There will not be any need to go to war. Perhaps you might think, but this is the law and we're not under the law. Well, in previous parasha, I've been telling you that you should be careful with that sort of interpretation because even Yeshua said it, he did not come to abolish it. And the same command that we just read, we also find it in the teaching of Yeshua, the apostle, and of course, of Paul. And I'm sure you're very familiar with the story of the Good Samaritan. Let us read part of that teaching, shall we? So I'm going to touch part of it, not the entire teaching. So... We're reading from Luke chapter 10, and let's start with 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law, meaning this is not just a lay person, this is someone who knew the scripture. And he stood to test Jesus. And when I say testing, don't put it in a negative way, because we actually are to test even the people who are instructing us. Teacher or rabbi, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Wow, there isn't nothing bigger, no popularity, no money, no possession than to inherit eternal life. And what did Jesus say? Oh, do the sinner's prayer. <laughs> Actually, there's nowhere in the Bible such a prayer ever was uttered. But what is it written in the law? What law? The law of Moses. Again, he's not pointing to himself, but what was already given to Moses. And he replied, how did you read it? Meaning, how do you interpret this? How do you actually do the Torah? How do you put this into practice? And he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly. Jesus replied, do this, 
and you will live. He didn't say, put faith on this, put your trust on this, do the sinner's prayer. No, just do it. Like that big brand, just do it. Now, he wanted to justify himself. He said, but uh, actually, who's actually my neighbor? That's a very, very legitimate question. Because are we to choose and pick with our neighbor? Now, that's when Jesus come with his parable. We're not going to get into that. What I want to draw your attention is verse 6. Which of these three, I mean, you have to read the parable, of course, to know what Jesus is talking about. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And the expert in the law replied, the one who have mercy on him. Again, you need to know the context between Samaritans and Jews. Again, not going to get into that. If you would like me to do a teaching on that parable alone, let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you find any value in this teaching, do us a like, since this helps our channels a lot more than you think. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Again, what is the three essentials that we find in this teaching? Well, first of all, Yeshua is pointing the expert in the law back to the Word of God, which at that time was the Torah, the Ketuvim, and the Prophets. The Ketuvim meaning Proverbs, Psalm, etc. He didn't point it to himself. He could have done it. Sometimes he did, but this time he's pointing back to Moses. As well, that eternal life doesn't begin, please hear me well. Eternal life doesn't begin when we die. Because what did he say? How do we inherit the eternal life? And she said, do lie wise. It's a doing. It's not the sinner's prayer. It is not having faith. It is a doing. And loving is a verb. Loving is an action. It's not an emotion. <laughs> well, I don't feel like it. No one asks you to feel anything. <laughs> we have been told by God and the Master Yeshua himself that we must do. Eternal life begins now. It begins when we put our trust in the Son of the living God, Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth. It's not a matter of emotion. If it was a matter of emotion, trust me, we will be all over the place. Sadly, even at that time, that verse of loving one's neighbors as oneself was misinterpreted. And we actually see this reflected in the Gospel of Matthew, shall we? Now I'm reading from Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 and 44. This is Jesus speaking. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor. Again, he is quoting Levitical. And hate your enemy. But I tell you, I mean, here it goes. This is the right interpretation. Love your enemy. What? And pray for those who persecute you. Strong, strong Things for us to do. This is not easy. This is not based in emotion. Yes, I know. It is easier said than done. But even Yeshua have to tell the crowd, listen, you heard this, but I'm telling you. As a matter of fact, where in the scripture does it tell us that we are to hate our enemy? Already in the time of Yeshua, people thought, okay, someone treat you well, you treat them well. And we also do that today. It's very easy to love those who love us back. It's a different story when people don't like us, when people misjudge us, when people even criticize us without even know the whole story of our life. And we don't have to go that far. <laughs> this also applies inside of our own congregations and families without going that far. But let me show you what the actual scripture has to say against our enemies. I'm reading this time from Exodus, which is part of the Torah, 
verse 4 and 5 of chapter 23. If you come across your enemy's ox or donkey wandering off, be sure to return it. Don't keep it. If you see the donkey or someone who hates you, wow, falling down under a load, do not leave it there. Because you don't be saying, well, this guy don't know my business, you know, God knows my heart, blah, 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 right? Be sure you help them with it. Be sure you help them with them, your enemy. The donkey or the ox of your enemy. And if you actually believe there is a verse, perhaps that I'm missing, or a passage, perhaps that I'm missing, what it says that we are to hate those who hate us, that we are to hate those who despise us. Please let me know in the comments below. Perhaps I, I, I don't know it and you do know. So let me know in the comments below. But what Yeshua and Moses is telling, if you're enemy, of course, the context, because this is an agricultural, you know, setting. But let's say your neighbors who hate you, perhaps, I hope not, is wandering dog or cat, or he have a flat tire. Will you help him or her? You know, so... I know it's easy to say than done. I know that. And I've been in situations like that, like, God, please help me. And he has. Not because I felt it. No way. I didn't want to. But it actually hurt me inside my own soul. But for us to get to that actual commitment, to be a true follower, because it's easy to say it. It's easy to, to think in church how much we trust God, but when it comes to putting it into practice, that is a different story. For, for us to get there, we actually, we must know our faith. We must put our faith into practice. And of course, we ought to share our faith. Friends, if you reach this far, Thank you so much. You will do us a great favor if you do like it. And if you find value, consider to subscribe. And of course, you can share this content with others. Once again, my name is Aviel. I'm Isho, super guy from here, from the land of the Messiah. And we do weekly videos like this, as well, of the whole land of the Messiah. Shabbat Shalom.